my fellow Singaporeans. It's been several weeks now since this crisis of COVID-19 hit us and people's voice has been very vocal expressing our views about the handling of this crisis by our government. We acknowledge the need for national unity, but at the same time, it would be a miss for us as an opposition party not to voice out our criticism if we think that the government is handling the crisis badly. And it is handling badly. Singapore now has the most number of confirmed cases, 67 as I speak. And we are 3,400 kilometers away from Wuhan, the epicenter of the crisis. We are almost like the furthest country in Asia away from China, but we have the most number of cases. I shall have more to say about the handling of the crisis in the coming days. But today, I want to speak to you directly about what Ong Yi Kang, the education minister, said yesterday when he told Singaporeans that there was no need to close schools. People's voice cannot disagree more with what he said. And he offered three reasons for not closing schools. Number one, he said, well, no point in closing schools because children may catch the infection at home anyway. Number two, he said, no need to close schools because the school children, especially the elder one, may still go out even if they are ordered to stay at home. And number three, he said, and this is the most important thing he said, he said that closing schools would mean a major disruption to life. None of the reasons he gave hold any water. And I will explain to you why. Number one, school children come home every day. They don't stay in school. They don't live in school. So if they are going to catch an infection from their parents or their relatives at home, they're going to catch it anyway. Why are you then still allowing them to go back to school where they may then transmit this disease to their peers? And we know that schools are the most fertile ground for the transmission of diseases. Every time you have hand, foot and mouth disease in a childcare or in a kindergarten, that place is closed down immediately. And did we not have a scare just yesterday when we learned that two children in St. James's Kindergarten in the Gilstead campus were served with quarantine at home orders because they had come into contact with a relative who was a confirmed COVID-19 case. Now we know from many cases overseas that this disease can pass from someone who is asymptomatic, who does not show any signs of the disease. And what happens in that case? The disease gets passed on and the child goes to school or kindergarten or childcare or preschool. And then there's a probability that that disease will spread. Let me come to the second reason now. He says, oh, no point because, you know, the school children will still go out of the house, especially the older ones. That happens anyway. Our school children don't go from school back home all the time. Many of them wander outside after school. And we also know that our school children are not transported in a vacuum from home to school. They have to take public transport, many of them. And there's always a chance of catching the infection in that manner. Let me come to the third point. He says it will be a great disruption to life. Now, Hong Kong and Vietnam closed schools weeks ago. And in Hong Kong, schools are not going to resume until March the 16th at the earliest. Are you trying to tell us that 
those Hong Kong parents, those Vietnamese parents are not facing the same inconvenience having to handle the children who are being ordered to stay at home. From what I know, most families in Hong Kong have two parents working. Are we a lesser people than the Hong Kong people in that we cannot put up with this disruption? Is our government less able to put in the necessary mechanisms to ensure that parents can take care of their children during this critical time? It is a time, it is unparalleled, when we as a people and our government must come together to solve this crisis and to prevent the spread of this dreaded disease. Last year, I had the opportunity to meet a very nice English lady by the name of Jean. She's 86. And she told me the story of how when she was young, she was sent down south from London to escape from the Blitz. And she did not see her family for two years. And that was the case with most children in those days. Some were sent down south to places like Southampton, sent out west to places like Wales. And so families are disconnected. But that is the price we have to be prepared to pay when confronting an enemy, a crisis of this magnitude. People's voice will keep on advocating for our schools to be closed. I hope to be able to speak to you again very soon about this developing crisis and I thank you for watching this video.